Hello and welcome to the News Click Studios here in New Delhi. Uh, I'm joined by Prabhi Purkayasta today to talk about two important and quite sort of prominent news stories of the day from the world of sport but linked to far more than just what happens on the pitch. Uh, the first story we're talking about is, of course, as you can see from the screen behind us, Castor Semenya and uh, her sort of reaction to the 163-page detailed judgment on her case uh, that has come out uh, yesterday. Uh, Prabir, so many things, uh, gender identity issues, uh, of course, race plays a part in this particular story because Semenya has said many times that she's felt singled out in terms of uh, the direction of these kind of studies. Uh, she's come out and said today that, in fact, she's been treated as a human guinea pig in terms of the different hormonal treatments and hormonal adjustments that she's had to go through including a two-year period where she was asked to take oral contraceptives as a means of reducing her testosterone, naturally occurring testosterone levels. Uh, so, of course, her case has been rejected and now, together with the South African Federation, they will appeal that in the Swiss court tribunal, the Supreme Court uh, equivalent. Um, so, that case will carry on and it's a case that's been going on for already almost a decade her, throughout her career. Um, what do you make of these developments? What do you make of the sort of mental or uh, and even otherwise physical struggle that she's had to go through through this process? Let's let's sort of look at it a little more objectively. That before we talk about the human being involved in this case, Castor Savania, and you have said she's been going through this ten years of shall we say. Uh, various uh, arguments back and forth mm. and being the human, now the human guinea pig for even treatments for the last two years, mm. quote unquote treatment because she's not suffering from anything that needs yeah. to be treated right. except the sports thinks it's a condition that needs to be treated. Mm. There is no other reason for doing it. I think the important issue is that <coughs> what do we regard as a basic marker of gender and basic marker of gender if it is multiple, not one then we have a whole lot of complexities that come in. Mm -hmm. And in this case, what has happened is that this whole issue of a, what is a gender marker has been not brought to the hormonal level. Mm -hmm. Till now, it is about genetics, that are you female or are you male? And of course, there are very few cases where you have ambiguity even there. At the genetic level, you could still have ambiguity because there are some outliers that still take place in this particular case. But in, shall we say, almost universally, as I said, with a few exceptions aside, it is genetically you can determine whether it's male or female. Now, if you also bring in hormonal levels, what is a female hormone, what's a male hormone, now you're creating ambiguities of different kinds. And I don't think sports should have gone into what is gender as defined by multiple markers. Mm. So they have said it is unfair. Now, let's look at it another way. Shall we say in certain ports, sports, if your male hormones is above a certain level, then also they should be reduced in order for other men to per, you know, level compete playing level field. playing field. <laughs> should we also say that muscle size also should be restricted? Uh -huh. Now, how many ways should we then look at what is quote unquote level playing field? Mm. Uh, we have the fundamental level playing field, men do not compete against women. Okay, that is supposed to be the only level playing field we have introduced. And in sports <coughs> where body weight matters, boxing, then you have weight, character. then you have weight char further characterization through weight. Yeah. But beyond that, if we want to do it through testosterone, I'm afraid it should not be then restricted to only women. And why only one particular, uh, shall we say, range of uh, running yeah. that, that you, have redu uh, you have considered, not for others, then I think you're opening a really a much more complex question. And as I said, I think this is completely a territory which sports should not enter. It is biology, it is science, it is really not the purview of the sports to do it. And I do believe that if the reverse had been the case, that it had come from, say, a, a country which has, shall we say, less pigment. And I think the answers could have been, would have been quite different. Different, yeah. And I, I think that is, in essence, her entire argument. Uh, it, it's beyond, it's about, a lot of it has to do with the singling out of it. While, when you look at male sport, 
the Superman gene, as it were, is celebrated and sort of uh, idolized and looked at as the paragon of physicality and all of that. Uh, but when you have, like you said, I, whether you call it an outlier or a, uh, somebody with a similar superwoman gene, I guess, in the, this case, uh, that dominates her field, you find a way to sort of <laughs> keep that in control. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know the whole, whole issue for me is that would it have the, what she has raised, would it have occurred if race did not enter the equation? Hmm. I, I think that answer is relatively clear that mm. it would certainly the decision would have been different, different. Uh, because let's face it, sports is a place where the, shall we say, the those who run sports, those who are involved in sports also have in their lifetimes not changed too much in the way they have looked at, shall we say, gender, gender stereotypes and the kind of uh, acquisitions <coughs> which have been made against various sports uh, bodies. bodies. So I think that's been an ongoing problem that has been there in any case in sports, particularly men at in position of power vis-a-vis -vis women. Mm. So I think that's a definitely something that we have seen. But I'm saying that when you're looking at bringing it to the realm of science, because ultimately it's a medical yeah, testimony, yeah. it's been a biologist testimony, geneticist testimony, all of it which seem to have been uh, taken into account. Mm -hmm. There the issue is really that can we actually have in science, gender being decided on hormonal basis or on genetic basis or a mixture of the two. Mm. And as you said, the Superman gene, uh, why is it treated differently, differently. and in this particular case? Also in this case, there is literally only one parameter on which the entire thing is based. And the other side of it is that mm, the IAAF, the International Ath Athletics Federation, which is on the other side of this case, is also making an argument for equality and level playing field, saying that, you know, look at the number of women athletes who are having to, who, I suppose, I don't know what the argument is, that, that they cannot beat Semenya, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but the, 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 uh, as you said, that, you know, sports is about differentiation. Sports is about who can beat another person, mm. celebrating the one who can beat others. Now, if you want to play and have level playing field, give medals to everybody. You know, uh, in, in children, there are some naughty countries who actually mm -hmm. don't uh, give medals to the first, second and third. So, you know, there are ways of looking at it. And yes, I do think that uh, you could consider that the sp competitive sports should not be there at all. Okay, so you could even consider that should we have sports of this kind at all or not. But as long as you have it, can you really talk about level playing field when the whole argument is to see who is the best? You know, what is person who is the best is what you are seeing when you have a race. Yeah. So I think that's not really the issue of a level playing field, but an unfair advantage. Mm. And that's why we have uh, taken out so many things which used to be used by athletes to provide the edge. Let's face it, even today, cheating in sports is a very, very, uh, shall we say, elite industry. And uh, in any of the uh, Olympics uh, uh, villages, there are whole sorts of stories about what, how and what comes in and what the athletes get or don't get. And the superior scientific quote unquote scientific methods also give an edge to different athletes. But there it's a cheating industry which you're trying to beat. But this is not the case. Yeah. This is a natural uh, occurring uh, in, in the human body. Yeah. And if there are dissimilar levels, can you then do what is the Procastian solution? chop off somebody's uh, head if or feet if they're too tall or somebody's uh, stretch somebody to fit the bed. Mm. And this, I'm afraid, <coughs> is what this particular judgment is. So I think this is a judgment which history will uh, show was wrong and it will be overthrown. But unfortunately, Castor Semania, Semania is going to pay the, uh, pay the price just like Duti Chand may pay the price, like mm. other athletes pay the price. They are going to be sacrificed uh, in this particular case. So, uh, Duti Chan's case, the Indian uh, sprinter, which also took a long time to get through at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, and an amazing story in how she managed to put that case together, build a scientific team, 
uh, managed to find support and then present a case and uh, CAS ruled in her favor. So essentially it's the same story, testosterone levels naturally occurring. What makes the two stories different? Well, this is an interesting case because as we know, testosterone would mean that your muscle mass would increase. And that is why men have a different kind of muscle mass than women have. It's not that the amount of muscle is less. Mm. It's also the size and women tend to have a different structure of the muscle than men tend to have. And it's mainly because of the testosterone level, that's what it is argued. You can see bodybuilders just grow muscle and uh, with testo testosterone supplements without actually adding to strength. Mm. But in certain cases, uh, this m muscle mass is supposed to provide extra power. Now, if that happens, I would have thought the sprints should also be affected. So we are not clear why this has been restricted to the distance that uh, Castor Semania runs, the middle distances, mm. as, as uh, it were, yeah. 800 longer to 1600, sprints, longer sprints. It's, it's difficult to understand because if it was testosterone and muscle which was in uh, in question, mm. then I thought the sp shorter sprints would also have been included. Mm -hmm. But somehow this has been more targeted to Castor Semania's case. Mm. It appears that uh, Duti Chand is not that much of a threat to shall we say to other sprinters, mm. but she was seen to be a threat and therefore this specific ruling, which also substantiated what she has been saying, mm. that she has been the target, not testosterone. Yeah, and, and again, the point that you brought up about race also comes into the picture because, I mean, if we look at it realistically, uh, the sprints are dominated by black athletes. Yes, that, that, is, that has been the truth. So oh, you leave them out of it. Uh, but in these distances, you find that after Semenya, the rest of them are different races. A large number of them are from different so parts of the world. So in any case, I mean, yeah. So 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 it is definitely also th the race card is a prominent part of the whole conversation. Yeah. Which is a, so it's a bizarre sort of. And uh, it's also interesting that if you come to higher the distances again, the yeah, Ethiopians. Again yeah. Kenyans dominate. Yeah. So that's also the other part yeah. of it there also. This is, seems to be an area where, shall we say, certain uh, certain pigments still play an important that's role. Part. And maybe in others, they still, they have sort of been uh, not there. Of course, large part of it, as we know, is because for a large number of people, whether it is football, whether it is sports, this is a way of upward mobility. And unfortunately, the world does not provide many opportunities for upward mobility to a whole bunch of people except sports. And that is why we see a lot of this case coming up. Yep. But yes, it's interesting that uh, the fact that the, this, this range of sprints have been affected and not the lower or the higher bands, uh -huh. this is uh, again something which is very difficult to understand purely on a scientific basis. Maybe there are uh, sports scientific experts who know much more than I do, and I, of course I am not an expert in this area at all. We have one doctor who was also a part of Kester Sabanya's <coughs> case, who's from Delhi. Mm -hmm. So she was, I, she, the, I, I think we should, this click should Definitely. Uh, try and reach, call, out. Uh, reach, her, uh, reach out to her and have a discussion on this. And I think she was also helping other athletes, yep. including Duthi Chan. Yep. So we should actually talk about this in more detail with her. But I, on the as I said, on the examination of, at, at least on the face, face of, it, of it, do not find a very logical understanding either the range in which this has been, this bad, this particular restriction has been imposed or the scientific basis of what constitutes gender. Both these, I think, are, to my mind, extremely problematic. And I'm hoping that the fight that Kester Sabania is launching and uh, other athletes in her support will be uh, doing, will uh, in the long term see this verdict defeated, mm. even if it survives in the short run. Short run. Yeah, fair enough. Incredible. And so she said that no one can ever stop her from running. And she's already moved on to start competing in the longer 3,000, uh, 5,000, mm -hmm. let's see. So, so yeah, it'd be interesting. And she, she for sure definitely seems like she's up for, for the fight. 
Uh, and you know this kind of testosterone it's a change medicine that she's been asked to take has lifelong effects, effects it's also yeah, bad already, in the body I mean, yeah. so these are not things that you prescribe as if it's something Just which is completely over means. over the uh, over the counter uh, drug these have serious effects oh she said that she had massive weight gain and uncontrollable weight gain uh, nausea almost constant abdominal pain so physical as well as forget about the fact that you're messing with all your levels so what what's happening in your mind i guess no, we don't understand those things but uh, so pretty hard run and i guess her decision is to look after herself and not at any cost be involved in this whole medical plan that the iwf seems to have prepared for her uh, but we'll move on from there to an upwardly mobile gentleman mr michel platini who's uh been or was detained for a brief while for investigation uh, for ethics violations in 2015 uh, it's an ongoing investigation that's b- that began in 2017 and highlights sort of uh, the link between big money football and politics so it's not strictly speaking a sports story today sort of if you can break it down in 3 minutes <laughs> uh how does this money go around and what is the connection between sport big sport and big money Well you know one thing is sports is no longer just sports it is the biggest entertainment entertainment industry in the world today i think it's beats films and it beats television for sure and probably it beats the other sport quote unquote gaming the game uh, the bo- xbox is in all other stuff yeah. which is also very big business which yeah. people don't realize but in this particular case we see a strange mixture of both politics and of money and of course the big football club mm-hmm. because the but the but the bigger ones and that is barcelona real madrid uh, you have the english football clubs and now four or five which are pretty big those sort of are out of reach uh, because already they have acquired a certain size mm-hmm. and they have been taken over by big money earlier. earlier so qatar who was looking to try and get votes for the world cup then also invested it not only in a club and paris saint germain was the of course the vehicle for qatar the bought the club mm-hmm. also promised big money in it but also the fact that <coughs> it was linked to sarkozy who was the president of france at the time yeah. and france's political support was required to get the uh, shall we say the support of uh, other countries to bring it into qatar mm-hmm. as the uh, world cup uh, mm-hmm. venue and as you know the world cup venue being qatar was a very bad venue for various sides apart from the fact that about 3000 to 4000 workers have died in constructing this it's a it's a place where really it's, it doesn't sustain any other sports let alone football it's a very small kingdom so to say so the whole hinterland or the support base that should have been there isn't there so this was an obvious uh, shall we say money power speaking mm-hmm. and in this case the vehicle seems to have been paris saint germain and the fact that uh, sarkozy uh, was a part of the club and of course this meant uh, quote and quote uh, money being given bribes in other words and other favors it's yeah. not just bribes that is there but this i think is a clearest example of politics money and sports so all the three come into focus yeah. here and the the allegations or, or the investigation it's a criminal investigation with fairly serious ramifications perhaps if things are proven in court uh looking into both the award of the 22 world cup of course but also the 2016 uh euros to france uh platini was a key figure in the background negotiations and uh, and also on the front of it Uh, for that tournament uh how do you th- see any of this playing out D- do you feel like there will be real results there will be a sort of conclusion to these investigations or will it just be uh, another eye wash you know these are very <coughs> difficult to say as we know that uh, both in the case of world cups we have other issues also not only qatar but uh, not only uh, shall we say uh, Michel Platini who's a very well known name in that sense because he was himself a big player. Yeah. But also the fact there have been other uh, countries other people involved who are also under investigations who just are not that big a name mm. partly because they never played football at that level they mm. were just backroom boys who later on became uh, shall we say important players in the fe- important players in federations and in the world UEFA hierarchy itself. Mm. 
So leaving that part of it out, you know, the question is that how much of this really ever translates into cleansing the system. Mm. Now, we know not only it's a question of, uh, say, the federations that we are talking about, we are also talking about the clubs. The clubs have been supposed, they are supposed to be under certain discipline. They cannot spend to more than this amount for doing various things. Their own financial strike, fair play. financial fair play, so that the <coughs> league does not become completely lopsided. Mm. A few clubs can play among themselves, the rest don't matter kind of scenario. Yeah. And that will lose at the end of it spectator interests. Mm. So therefore, this is a kind of killing the golden goose because ultimately spectators really sustain the sport. So therefore, there is also this element that in the fair play within the leagues themselves yeah. and also within the uh, how much money they can or cannot spend. And we know that this is being violated. We have again the equivalent of the Snowden revelations taking place here yeah. where all the clubs, how they have, uh, shall we say, <coughs> siphoned money to pay far beyond what the guidelines are, what the rules are, mm. though that's also there. So uh, how much of this will translate into uh, actual, uh, from investigations of punishment is really something that I have to see. Some people will be punished, but the big guys, the ones who really own the money and the clubs, I don't think there's going to be much that will happen to them. Certainly, I don't think Sarkozy, the former president, is going to suffer for this. Thank you, Praveen, for all those insights, both on the Semenya story and on Plakni. Of course, we'll follow up on these stories as we go along. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay tuned to News Click.